When a covalent bond breaks, the most common mechanism is that both of the electrons in the bond are transferred completely to one of the two atoms from the bond. This results in the formation of a cation and an anion. The other possibility, which is not as common, is that the electrons are evenly split between the two atoms. One atom receives one electron and the other atom receives the second electron. This results in the formation of a species that we call a radical. A radical is an atom or a molecule or an ion that has at least one unpaired electron. These two different possibilities for breaking a covalent bond are known as heterolytic and homolytic cleavage. In heterolytic cleavage, we are forming a cation and an anion. Remember the prefix hetero is the prefix that we use to imply that two things are different from each other. In a heterolytic cleavage, we are producing two different types of products, a cation and an anion. Um, in contrast, we have homolytic cleavage. Uh, homo being the prefix that means the same. So in homolytic cleavage, we are producing two of the same types of species, two radicals. Also notice in the homolytic cleavage mechanism that I drew, I used a different type of curved arrow. My curved arrow had just half of an arrowhead on it in contrast to our traditional arrow. This was intentional. We used this particular type of curved arrow, which is sometimes called a fish hook arrow. This is used to represent the movement of one electron. In contrast, our traditional arrow is used to represent the movement of two electrons. So again, these products of this reaction are referred to as radicals because they have, these ones have one unpaired electrons. Radicals are pretty unstable species. Their stability matches the stability or the relative sp stability of carbocations, meaning that the more alkyl groups we have on a carbon that is a radical, the more stable it will be. This is, for example, the methyl radical, and it is the least stable out of all of the different types of carbon radicals. Just like our methyl carbocation is also the least stable of all of our carbocations. And as we begin adding alkyl groups to a carbon radical, its stability begins to increase as well. So here's a primary carbon radical, which is a little bit more stable. A secondary that has two alkyl groups on it will be even more stable. And our explanation for this is the same as our explanation for the stability of carbocations. We know that these alkyl groups act as electron density donors. So these alkyl groups help to push electron density in to the, carbo to the carbon with the radical, or the carbocation, I almost said, and that helps to stabilize this unusual electron arrangement on the carbon atom. Now we do have a couple of species that are even more stable than a tertiary, and that is the allylic. I'll draw a picture of allylic in a second, and also a benzylic. The benzylic radical is the most stable out of all of the different types of radicals. So this is a nice progression of least to most stable. Let's begin um, by drawing a picture of the allylic radical. The allylic and benzylic radicals are uh, high in terms of stability because they are stabilized by resonance. Allylic is always referring to the carbon atom that is bonded to a carbon-carbon double bond. So this that I just drew here would be an example of an allylic radical because the radical, the lone electron, is on a carbon atom that is bonded to a carbon-carbon double bond. This position right here is what we call the allylic site. And having a, a lone electron in that place makes it an allylic radical. This allylic radical is stabilized by resonance. We can move that single electron in 
to that carbon-carbon bond since I'm moving just one electron, I'm using the half arrowhead. And then of the carbon-carbon double bond, I can break that carbon-carbon double bond homolytically. So I'm putting one electron from the double bond in to this position, combining it with my radical. That's going to give me a double bond in this position. And again, breaking this bond homolytically, one of the electrons goes in to form the double bond. The other electron goes to the end of the carbon chain as it's still a radical. But just like um, when we're using resonance to delocalize a positive charge or a negative charge, using resonance to delocalize a radical is helpful for the stability of the molecule as well. The benzylic is very similar to allylic. The benzylic position, whether we're talking about a radical or a carbocation or just anything in general, the benzylic position is a carbon atom that is attached directly to a benzene ring. So if this is the benzene ring and this is the carbon atom that's bonded directly to the benzene ring, and because there's a radical here, this we refer to as a benzylic radical. The benzylic radical is also stabilized by resonance. It's just got more resonance than allylic. So I'm gonna draw we're doing the same sort of thing with this, um, drawing these resonant structures. They're a little bit more tedious when we're drawing them for radicals because we have three curved arrows for every single movement of a bond when we're looking at radicals. So again, what I've done here is I am going to form a new carbon-carbon double bond in this position right here, and I'm forming this double bond from my radical electron getting moved in, and then also one of the electrons from this bond getting moved in. The other electron from this bond ends up out here as a new radical. And we can repeat this process as we go around the ring. So for our second, or excuse me, our third structure, we are going to be creating a double bond in this position right here. We'll be using our radical and one of the electrons from this bond. So let's draw those curved arrows. The other electron from this bond will end up onto this carbon atom as a radical. Like that. And then we have one more to go. That was actually really, really messy. I'm going to redraw that because that's unacceptably messy. And then for our last, for our last resonant structure, we're going to form a double bond in this position using our radical and one of the electrons from that double bond. So using the radical and one electron from the double bond, almost made it a regular arrow, and then the other electron from the double bond will become a radical in our last resonance structure. So again, benzylic radicals are extra stable because their lone electron can be distributed in four different positions around the ring.